Let me catch my breath. <sighs> yeah, <coughs> let's catch our breath. If I were brave, if I were afraid, if I were strong, if I were weak, if I were all those things, because I am all those things all at the same time, and I'm more than that. When I was listening to the prayers and celebrations, and the heartfelt emotion that was in all of it, I just wanted to say, may the source be with you. I really did. And it was that knowing, like Asha, when she first started talking a few moments ago before her song, wouldn't it be amazing if we could know that every time, all the time, we are so aware that source is available, much less be connected to source all the time. The reading that Tina gave this morning I thought was very apropos, especially the comment, if the pipe that conducts water from a high reservoir to our homes becomes disconnected, it does not mean that the water has dried up at its source. So it is with our life. Its source is an infinite sea of energy, power, love, and wisdom. Everything is energy. Everything. I think sometimes it's easy to get into our personality, if you will, in our humanness, in our ego, because that's what we chose to do. We chose to incarnate in this form. And it can get a little tricky. At least for me it can. I don't know about you all. Sometimes when you're navigating that path, if you're like wondering, where is Source? Source is all that animates everything. It connects us, it binds us. It's particles, it's matter, vibrating, just like this podium right here, or all the bodies that are in this room. Everything that you see is particle, atom, molecules, all of those amazing things. We live in a, uni in a universe of vibration. I love how Einstein reminds us that nothing happens until something moves. Everything vibrates to a particular measurable frequency. What appears to be solid is a dance of particles in empty space. Go to the tiniest of these quantum particles and you'll discover that it emanated from a source that vibrates so fast that it defies the world of beginnings and endings because it just is. There is no beginning or end. It just is. This is source energy. It's that from which we originated and that to which we will return. It's everlasting. And as creative beings, we forget. You know, we hear about we fall asleep, and when we fall asleep, as Buddha, when Melody reminded us, says, oh, enlightened? No, I'm just awake. It's about reawakening and paying attention. It's about recognizing that recognition, knowing that source is everywhere present, and we are truly the emanation of that source. Everything and everyone originated in this vibration and then moved into the world of things, bodies, our minds. That can be a little scary, don't you think? I think one time I heard, don't go into your mind, it's like a scary neighborhood, so make sure you take somebody in there with you because you never know what you're going to find. Anybody else ever feel like that? I'm not so sure I want to go in there because perhaps my thoughts, my prevailing thoughts, are the ones that really bring me into a place of fear. They're connected to that energy to where it's hard to feel courageous, it's hard to feel brave. It's hard to know anything in that moment except I'm fearful. Can I take that next step? Can I stand in my truth? Is there a source when I'm in that place? Has it gone anywhere? That's for you to answer for yourself. Because sometimes I know it certainly feels that way. You came from a source of well-being. You know what another word is for well-being? Wealth. The Greek origin of the word wealth is well-being. So when we talk about being sourced, we always talk about being prospered, about abundance. So it's our awareness and our recognition to say, that's what I choose. That is the thought, that is the word, that is my mantra.
that is my action that I'm going to take, is going to be steeped in that truth. It's going to be born out of that essence that just is. It's that cosmic stream, as we mentioned earlier, that flows in, around, and through all things. And all we have to do is what? Tap into it. Access it. Otherwise, we can say, yeah, there's a source, and I'm of that source, and I can create anything I want to create, but that mind, in our human mind, because... I forget, is it 90,000 thoughts we have a day and, and the majority of them are negative? Right. Tons of research on this. So how do you train yourself? I know with, may the force be with you, and I love Star Wars, that's why I told Melanie I was going to call, may the source be with you, because I really thought about the Jedi Masters. I thought about Luke Skywalker, and Obi-Wan Kenobi, and of course, you know, Chewbacca. That's my favorite. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say here is, to be, what did you hear throughout that movie? How many of you have seen at least one Star Wars? At least one. Okay. <laughs> to recognize what is the training that they have to go through. Do you remember Obi-Wan the movie, at the very first movie, what he says when he takes off the, or the helmet or puts on the helmet, whatever it is. But the bottom line is he says, Luke, trust your instincts. Listen. We hear it all the time. Get out of your way. Get out of your way. And what I offer to you today is step into a new way of being. It is right here, right now, in this moment. Do you believe that? Or do you believe you have to do something to get to that place? You have to earn it. You're not worthy of it. Open yourself up to a new personality. Let's break that down. A new personal reality. What is yours? Is it anchored in that cosmic stream, that flow? Or is it finite? Does it have limits and boundaries? And it's only appropriate in certain instances when... I want to get in there and do it differently because I can't trust that Source has my highest and best in mind. I know better. Remember, we're not the Ways and Means Committee. That we can say, yes, I am Source. It sustains me. It enlivens me. It nourishes me. It is all that I am. But what do I choose to do with it in this lifetime? You have the choice to summon. I love that word. Call it forth. Summon. Summon that higher vibrational energy to yourself. And this is a big word. Allow it. Allow it. Whatever fears or concerns you have, if you find yourself, and we know what that's going to be, bumping up against something and you have that resistance because you're not sure you can trust it, what are your ways to anchor into knowing that you are connected, that you can trust exactly what is coming and know that it truly is all good? I believe intuition is one of the greatest gifts that we have. To me, that is spirit, source, speaking to us when we take time to simply be still and listen. There's another quote too, it was attributed to Einstein, but they're not quite sure that it was actually his. Everything is energy, and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want, and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. It's not philosophy, it's physics. So we get back to science. We get back to, we could talk about the law of gravity today and how it works. Do you really care how it works? Are you glad that it works so you can like have your feet on the ground and perhaps enjoy some things simply because of gravity? There are universal laws or principles that are out there at work all the time. And we are the ones who are called or summoned to cultivate a consciousness. A consciousness that allows us to flow with that cosmic stream of all that is good, all that is amazing. 
What is it that you desire in your life? There's a forward written in the book, Asking It Is Given, which is actually Esther and Jerry Hicks. But there was a forward written in there by Wayne Dyer. And it simply says, you came from a source of love and well-being. When you're matched up to that energy of peace and love, you then regain the power of your source. When you're matched up. If each of you had a little meter today and it showed your vibrational frequency, what do you think it would say? What do you think it would register? I think it would be neat if we had some kind of scale like that we could get on every morning and go, ooh, I think I need to up my, you know, my vibration here. And having said that, what would you do in that moment? What would be the first thing you would do that you wouldn't even have to think about? Because we create by default most of the time. We don't create what you call deliberate creation to where there's something intentional. Often we're creating by default because we're always creating something. And something shows up and we're like, what the heck was that? Where did that come from? But what would you do? Raise it up. Raise it up. How do you raise it up? Turn on the music. Turn on the music. Okay? The point is, practices. What is in your spiritual toolbox? That's one of my favorite tools that I use in working with clients. What is in your toolbox? Whether they're wanting to create the most amazing relationship with themselves even, much less with another person, whether they're wanting the perfect occupation, health and well-being, whatever the case may be, what are the tools that are in your toolbox? If you opened up, do you even have a toolbox? That's the other question. And if you opened it up, what would be in it? What are the practices that you engage in on a regular basis? Just like the Jedi's in training. I remember too when uh, Dagobah, the, the planet where Luke had gone and, and met Yoda, and he's trying to raise you know, the ship out of the water, and, and Luke is, of course, thinking about something else that he can't do it, really. And Yoda's over there like, hey, you know, I've got this. There is no try, just do. So what are the obstacles that are in your way? What are the things that block you from source? You create your own reality. Did you know that? Nobody else. It's very easy sometimes to point that finger and say, well, that happened, and that happened, and that person, and that person, they're impacting me in some way, and they're responsible. Ever do that one? So owning our experience, to me, is one of the first things. Are you willing to own it? And not from a place of judgment. Simply from a place of observing and becoming so keenly aware of self that as soon as something comes into your field, you know, before we feel things here, we have energy bodies out here, energy fields out here. But as soon as something starts to enter your energy field, that you would notice it out here before it even came in. And even if it was here, that you would catch it so quickly that you, in that moment, could just say, you know what, I'm just going to breathe. I'm just going to breathe. And I'm going to be so mindful and so present with what is happening with me right now, a place of upset, a place of judgment, a place of fear, whatever the case may be, that I can catch it acknowledge it, and let it move on through, and not allow it to have any power over me. And to know that what is streaming in the background of these thoughts is that pure sea of consciousness. That's the presence. That's the source. Always there, in, around, and through us. It's like body and soul boot camp. What are the things that you do on a regular basis? that you know, you can say, yes, I can tap my meter over here and I can look at it and know that I'm at a vibration that truly is drawing to me that which I deserve, that which I desire, that which is essential for me to be that expression of source that I chose to be when I came here. 
Do you realize how powerful you are? That source is you, living, breathing. And when we come together because this source, it binds us together in the oneness. That is so powerful. It's like a spiritual tsunami that would be for good to create that wave that we could all ride with ease and grace and gratitude knowing that the source is with us and we are that very thing. Some of you may be familiar with Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's one of my favorites. And he wrote a great book called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And he's the one that talks about to become greater, to think greater, you have to let go of that old personality. You have to be willing to leave it behind. And as I said earlier, to step into a new way of being. Meditation is one of his huge practices. And if you really research meditation, you would find that a lot of spiritual teachers, spiritual masters, that meditation is one of the most powerful practices you can bring into your life. So I wanted to offer you something that Joe Dispenza talks about in his book, and it's metacognition. I mentioned cognition, recognition earlier, knowing, recognizing. Because in order for us, what I believe anyway, is for order for us to grow, in order for us to continue to expand, like I touched on earlier, self-awareness is one of the essential elements. Self-awareness. Know thyself. That's basically what it is. Are you comfortable? Getting to know yourself? If you asked yourself to marry you, would you? <laughs> or at least maybe you live together for a while? <laughs> Get to know each other? In that relationship? Think about it. How would that be? If you want to create a new self, you first have to stop being the old self. In the process of creation, the first function, and I love this because he goes into the science because it's about the brain. You've heard me mention neuroplasticity before to where the grooves up here and the brain. I'm trying to get you guys to smile. It must be too serious or something. <laughs> this is like a lecture, right? Anyway, in the process of creation, the first function of the frontal lobe is to become self-aware. Because we have metacognitive capabilities, the power to observe our own thoughts and self is, we can decide how we no longer want to be. To think, to act, to feel. This ability to self-reflect allows us to scrutinize ourselves and then make a plan. Do you have a plan? Anybody have a plan in here? A meal plan? I mean, I work with weight a lot and wellness. Anybody have a plan? Yeah, stuff to think about. All right. Now we've got some classes that we need to like, maybe offer. <laughs> make a plan. plan. Then make a plan to modify our behavior so we can produce more enlightened or desirable outcomes. Are you getting the outcomes that you want right now in your life? You see what I'm doing? is really giving you an opportunity for a self-inventory. Because to me, when we do that, in those places where we feel less than or we're lacking something, that, again, is calling us to connect to Source more fully. To be able to see yourself through a lens that is so fresh. To have a new perspective. Like the Jedi. When they trained and their mind became so keen that in any moment, there was a ripple in the force, they could sense it. They could feel it. Do you know when things are going on in your life, or perhaps you're having a thought, or you're getting ready to do something in particular, and it doesn't feel right? Do you do it anyway? I'm sure sometimes we do. That's part of being human. But would it be neat 
to have in that moment that sense within, that intuition, to be able to say, you know what, this is what I plan to do, but it just doesn't feel right. It's not aligned with my new self that I have chosen and committed to creating. Am I willing to be uncomfortable? Am I willing to do the work? Because I am never disconnected from source at any time. I may be, may be pinched off and not flowing, but how can I be totally disconnected because I am like the drop in the ocean? I am never not, or like the, I am never not source. Right? Your attention is where you place your energy. To use attention to empower your life, you will have to examine what you've already created. That's what I said earlier. What are you creating right now? What has shown up in your life? You look at your beliefs about your life, yourself, and others. You are what you are, you are where you are, and you are who you are because of what you believe about yourself. The beliefs are the thoughts that you keep consciously or unconsciously accepting as the law in your life. And this is the thing, whether you are aware of them or not, they affect your reality. So, you feel like you could stand up today and say, I am with the source, I am the source, may the source be with me. Would that feel some, it's like something that would align with where you are right now in your life? Would you be able to get your lightsaber? <laughs> and go out there? Asha's saying, yeah, she's excited. Imagine if we all had lightsabers in here, and when we went out in the world, it would be, well, at first I would do is cut any other cords that I still had attached, right? That I wanted to let go of my stuff, so that I could move freely in the world out there. But to take that lightsaber and to see it as something for good. To cut down and tear down all the old stuff that no longer serves me. And to be able to grow and build and expand out of that fresh, new ground. That soil, that substance. Where source is always streaming through. I love Joe Dispenza too because he really focuses on, and you probably hear this a lot. You focus on feelings. You have thoughts, you have beliefs. Then you have thoughts that come out of those beliefs in your, in your subconscious here because you could be thinking something up. You're like, oh, I'm going to do whatever. And you're, and you're like, oh, really? I don't believe you. So we have to examine the beliefs. So when thoughts happen, where are they coming from? Does somebody put that thought in there or is it something that's already within you? And then out of that, we'll have a thought and you have an emotion that follows a feeling. Right now, if I said, think about something, anything, and you pick something immediately. Think about anything. Notice what feeling comes with it. And on top of that, I would say, do you notice if there's even a feeling or an emotion that comes with it? Are you connected to yourself? Because sometimes we become very robotic. We're so busy multitasking, we can have certain thoughts. We don't pay attention to what it feels like. And our feelings, our emotions are a barometer for us to really know how to navigate, to know, yeah, I am one with source. I am connected to all that is. Things are flowing. I wrote down the um, song we sang, and I was jotting this down because after we sang this this morning, that was basically the talk. That was the talk. I feel the spirit moving in me. I feel the joy moving in me. I feel the peace moving in me. I feel the love moving in me. And then I'm going to add, I feel the presence moving in me. In, around, and through me. I am that source. I am that very energy. I wanted to compliment my talk this morning with a bit of meditation because I typically go into, after we talk, we go into meditation. But I wanted to allow just a few more moments because I'm a firm believer in meditation and now that I've become very entrenched in sound the last few years, it elevates you to a place, it's like this, the band, music, 
but there's entrainment, there's certain frequencies that come off of things. <coughs> and when you go into that space and place, to me, that is when you know that you are connected. You are at peace. And I just want to offer this as a meditation to close my talk, and I will offer you some things through it. So right now, I just invite you to get comfortable because this is a moment of what I would say to you, may the source be with you, for you to know it, to feel it, to embody it, because you already do, but to become conscious of it. Okay?